Okay, so, well, I am personally delighted to be kicking off today's web webinar that will be delivered, delivered by Joan Mugenzi and Abiola Rojo. So Joan Mugenzi is an employment transition coach, and she's the director of training with Coach Masters Academy in Uganda. She's also the founding president of ICF Uganda chapter. Now, Joan has over 600 hours of coaching practice and having worked with clients in both in Sub-Saharan Africa, Europe, and the US. Now, through her interactions, she has realized that most con clients in her context shows up expecting the coach to be a mentor, to guide and tell them what to do. Her strong mantra for those seeking coaching services is, if you must make the investment, make it in the right intervention. And with her today is Abiola Rodio. And Abiola is a certified transformative coach practicing as an executive and team coach for the past six years. She joined the faculty of Coach Masters Academy as the director of training for Nigeria four years ago. And she's been supporting with business development, training and supervision at the core and advanced level certification. Now, prior to choosing coaching as a career, she spent 28 years in the corporate world as a banker and human resources practitioner. She now leverages on her human resources expertise to drive her, her passion for coaching to help others, especially leaders who are looking for more out of their career and have the desire to reach their full potential. Their topic today is so top of the mind with everything that's going on in the world, I feel, and it's tapping into untapped human resources. They will be looking at the true essence of coaching, which taps into an, an unknown zone of discovery and reflective thinking space for both the coach and the coachee. They furthermore explore why coaching should not be confused with mentoring, where expectations and emphasis is on prescriptive thinking to fix a problem and a solution. Now, I know both Joan and Abiola for a long time, and as friends, as peers, as colleagues, and as a bouncing board. And it's my pleasure and privilege to hand the floor over to you, Joan and Abiola. Thank you so much, P, for the beautiful uh, introduction that you've given us and you are all welcome from where I'm sitting. I can see beautiful faces on the screen. I hope we are going to do justice to the topic that we have at hand. And tonight, what we really want to look at is tapping into untapped human resources. And as you see the slides, we are operating at in a, in, a, in a time where we have different generations represented in the workplace. And probably the only one that I could be missing here is the silent generation, but we are talking about baby boomers. We are talking about uh, generation X. We are talking about the millennials. We are talking about our data uh, natives. They are all in the workplace. And in this workplace, they all have hidden potential that we want to see and ask ourselves, how can we tap into that hidden, uh, that potential that they have? And we are going to look at basically three aspects in our presentation tonight. The first one is really to draw a distinction between uh, coaching and mentoring, especially as you want to uh, look at them as tools for performance enhancement. The second, we want to have an appreciation about the broader concept of the transformative coaching that we use at um, CMA, which really depends our learning. And the third component will be more about evoking and understanding the various stages of evoking awareness. What are we seeing now? We are seeing a growth in coaching demand, at least that's true for our markets. We are seeing a growth in um, coach training we are seeing an emergence of in-house coaching benches at the academies. We also recognize that we have a limited pool of coaching resources. Actually, globally, statistics show that there is only one coach for every 8,000 clients. Clearly, we are not 8,000 on this call, but there's just one coach for 8,000. And 
we also observe that there's a misunderstanding of the coaching offering. And allow me start with a story as I talk about this subject. The person in this picture is a prime news anchor in Uganda with um, NBS. And this is somebody that I met through a program called Women in News. And when I was attached, to, when she was attached to me, she was attached to me so that I could be her career coach. Now, Women in News is a program that runs a combo, if you wish, a combo of um, mentoring and uh, coaching. And so they do the mentoring majorly through learning hubs, and then they get the participants and attach them to career coaches so that then they can be guided through a process where they end up with a five-year career roadmap. So this lady was attached to me and her five-year plan was to become a news anchor in those five years. We started on the journey and in exactly four months, she had achieved her goal of becoming a prime news anchor. And so the job for us became, so what next given that you've achieved your dream within four months. And so that kind of changed the dynamics. And all this had a lot to do with the kinds of conversations that we're having, unearthing things and unsurfacing uh, surfacing things that were not very obvious to her. And so for me, that was something that was really exciting. And one year down the road, she was nominated the best news anchor for her media house. So yeah, that is it for, for us when it comes to coaching. And what does it mean when we talk about these untapped resources? When we are talking about untapped resources, we are really looking at the human being and thinking about how they show up. So when they're going to express themselves and the untapped resources within them, they are going to feature more in their way of being. And it is majorly at three levels, the thinking, the doing, and feeling. Remember, there are different generations. They are going to express themselves differently. So how do we show up for them? And what we have seen is that there are these two tools that come in. I really just love the way these waterfalls are helping us illustrate uh, this contrast. Mentoring is more of an inpouring. So you're basically looking at a relationship in which a person with experience, expertise, and wisdom, who is your mentor, helps another person because they've been there, done that. So they are helping this person to catch up and therefore the mentee is leveraging the experiential wisdom of the mentor. Whereas on, in coaching, we are looking at it as a partnership where really we are in the business of challenging the thinking process. So it's a thought provoking and creative process that will also inspire the, the person that you're coaching to maximize their personal and professional potential. So both of these are helping people to anchor their potential, but they are doing it differently. And just to use a little bit of a, in, an illustration here on this um, coaching, mentoring, managing uh, continuum, you realize that um, coaching is non-directive and it starts from the extreme of um, the coach showing up as somebody who knows nothing. And when I say know nothing, I'm not talking about being dumb. I'm talking about you coming into the space with an open mind, you're going to ask questions that are going to create a little bit of enhancing awareness. And you're able to ask instead of telling, just before this call, we had an interesting coaching conversation where things showed up for the client and they were not just obvious. So that is what happens that when you're in the middle of a conversation, you're going to have some awareness that will show up for you and that will influence your forward uh, action. Whereas mentoring, on the other hand, starts with somebody knowing a lot, and probably that's your ticket to becoming a mentor, that you must know a lot about the subject matter in which you want to support the mentee. Because you're going to tell, you're going to advise and guide, and you're going to share your experiences. And it's interesting that research has also been done, and it shows how much is retained when instructed versus when somebody is, um, is coached. And what we see is that if people are simply told, they will retain 70% after three weeks, while they will only retain 10% after six, uh, uh, six months. Then when it comes to being told and shown what needs to be done, 
After three weeks, 72% will have retained the knowledge that they received, while after six months, it comes down to 32%. When they are told, shown, and then they experience what they are being taught, after three weeks, they will have a retention of 85%. And after six months, they will have a retention of 65%. Now, just think about it. If you're simply going to tell people what to do, if within six months they are retaining 10%, what will happen after six months? So for HR people on the call, you can think about the training programs that you have and ask yourself what kind of methodologies are being used what kind of investment are we getting out of that? And I just thought that we could share some of um, the examples that we have. One of the um, opportunities we had, myself and Abiola, uh, Coach Masters Academy was part of um, uh, the pool of coaches that offered Microsoft uh, support to support 1,200 global sales executives. So we were part of this process. And the idea for Microsoft was to resurrect the coaching component that seemed to be silent. And the approach that they used was to offer both experiential training, meaning that they got their in-house people and equipped them with their coaching skills, but then attached them to coaches so that they could experience and see what that is. Recently, when we had the Africa executive uh, coaching conference, Safaricom shared and said they have 110 accredited coaches and their focus is that they want to be a purpose-led company and they're looking at people as enablers the end result of their processes has ended up in an 85 percent level of staff engagement definitely if you're in the human resource space you know that 85 percent level of staff engagement is really a great percentage I'm also part of a, a, a project, an ongoing project that is relying on external coaches, and that is uh, Village Rich, which is an, a, a global NGO that focuses on the last mile. And what is happening here, they've gotten their global leadership team, and we are coaching them on uh, topical organizational issues that they see as a major driver for their organization. And then we have Stanbic. I've seen some Stanbic coaches on the, on the call where we have a pool of 31 in-house coaches. They are all accredited through uh, Coach Masters Academy. And one of the things that the former head of human capital pointed out that they now have ongoing conversations as opposed to, you know how we normally have performance reviews that happen at certain points in time, that's changed to ongoing conversations. And that also uh, led to a reduction in complaints of performance reviews. And part of the interesting thing out of that as well, the coaches that are in there as managers, as leaders, one of the things that they are realizing is that they are also doing some coaching that could be informal because it is part of them. It is a competence. They are building their competence as a, as a leader, as a leader who is also a coach. And just to emphasize here that when we look at this slide, what, we, what is happening is that there are two arms that you could have. You could have the formal arrangement, formal arrangement meaning you have coaches that you have um, trained and they have a purpose to be there and guide the process through, but also you have the informal structuring that could happen within the organization. And that's what you're looking at. These ones are exclusive in terms of um, coaching. The program that I highlighted where I shared a story was a combo of both um, coaching and, uh, and mentoring. And I've also seen you deliver on the call. So I'm happy that it's one of those examples that I'm using. When we were preparing for this presentation, I had a chat with um, CEO of um, Unilever Uganda. And what is interesting is that Unilever trained their exco at the big, just before the lockdown when COVID happened. And now they have eight of their exco as coaches. What is interesting is that these are the ones that facilitate conversations. They are part of a subset of 30 staff, but these are people that now facilitate conversations that feed into 120 merchandisers and 108 distributors or salespeople of the Unilever brand. And the interesting thing is, as each one of them digs gold out of their downline, the entity was able to double business numbers within the COVID year. Just think about it. They got coaching as an intervention, 
And if you're thinking about return on investment, it is clear with this kind of example that yes, coaching works. And I want to end this part of the presentation sharing something that kind of really caught my, my eye. Coaching happens in a conversation. And this is a conversation that is happening with a high level HR expert overseeing programs across multiple countries. At minute 48, when the coach asks the client to kind of reflect on what is happening, the client says, yeah, yes, mm, only that you, you know, you only give me, I now understand the coaching bit of it. I really understand. I thought, I now know the difference between questions and teaching. I must say I have now picked because I didn't hear you give me a solution. You guided me to solutions, okay? And then the coach responds and says, my work is not to give you any solutions, Frida. So what is this coaching that we are talking about? I'm going to hand it over to Abiola to continue with the rest of the presentation as she introduces coaching as a vital tool for us. Over to you, Abiola. Thank you so much, Joan. It's a pleasure to be here. And indeed, I'm going to look at how do we use coaching as a vital tool? Taking it from the point of view of uh, the last, the last uh, slide, where the, coach, the client saw that coaching actually has a different dimension from telling and from instructing. Coaching is a tool that helps the client to discover treasures in an unknown zone. And the unknown zone is apparent in a coaching conversation. What we have is that when the client and the coach come together, or the client and the coachee, if you're looking at the workspace where we have this, the, 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 this, the supervisor and the direct report, when they come, they are having a conversation and they begin to use coaching mindset or coach, coaching mindset and ideas and skills to have a conversation. What happens in that unknown zone? With coaching, the client is coming with a lot of questions wants to know, maybe wants to resolve an issue, wants answers to or solutions to a problem, or is just wanting to express a feeling with the coach. So those questions begins to sort of go in the mind of the client or the coachee. In the same vein, in the same vein, the client, the coach comes into the conversation in a vulnerable state. I mean, what do we mean by this? The coach doesn't come with anything in terms of knowledge, preconceived idea, or preconceived, a meditate, premeditated idea of what the client is coming into the conversation for. Sometimes the coach doesn't even know the topic. But when they have a coaching conversation, they're in a space where they want to discover. They're in a space where they want to unearth the treasures. They're in a space where they want to make new discovery. And that is the power in coaching. Next slide. Now, in a typical coaching space, the client comes in with a lot of with a lot of mental energy. And what do we mean by mental energy? We mean the client is coming with a lot of stories, a lot of information that happened in the past. Situation from they want to solutions to. And they're bringing a lot of just why things are is brought into the coaching conversation. Now, in coaching, the coach is able to use the power of words to pick out what is it that this client is really 
telling me? How is this client experiencing his story or his situation? Because a lot of meaning is behind the words that the client or the coachee is bringing to the conversation. Now, the, the coach is also able to, to, to use those words to make powerful inquiries. And such inquiries, what does that do to the client? It helps the client to begin to look or become dis detached from the story or the situation and begin to look at the situation and story in a different perspective, with a different lenses and from a different perspective. Now, when the client is able to step back or step out of the story and begin to see things differently, then the coach supports the client to be able to get imagine understanding. Imagine understanding in terms of how come did I not see this before? Now I'm seeing it in a better light. Oh, I can have more insights into the situation. So with better understanding, with the imagined understanding, the client is beginning to reflect, to see things even differently from where they began the conversation from. And with this, the client becomes more insightful, more aware, awareness is heightened in such a way that their mind becomes positive and begins to look at things that are possi possible. They begin to see things are in such a way that the, the glass becomes half full rather than half empty. Now, where you have a self-realization, when you have reflected on, on your scenario and you're able to think through it yourself just by your coach asking in you those powerful and, and insightful questions, then you are able to make commitment. You are, you are becoming empowered. You are also being motivated to make changes to see things differently that will bring about sustainable change and results. So this as a, as a nutshell is the power that we have in coaching. And this can be used both in the workplace and in other areas of our lives. In the, work, in the workplace, we can use it to motivate staff, we can use it to the other things. We can use it in terms of delegating. We can use it for task performance. We can use it for, for staff development. We can use it for relationship issues at work. We can also use it for problem solving. The most important thing is to have the coaching mindset. And you remember we said coaching is a skill that can be learned. So you don't even have to be a professional coach for you to begin to think like a coach. You can use it for performance management, appraisal and assessment, team building, planning and reviewing. You can use it for team working and so many other things along the organization uh, environment. Also in sales, it is important for us to know that coaching within the organization is a skill that can be imbibed and can be used. The most important thing is for us to understand that it's not about telling, it is not about advising, but it's about helping the coachee to reflect about the whole being, the way they, they think, the way the coachee feels, and the way they want to do things. That is the treasure. That is the human resources. Now, as the academy, we have an, a highly acclaimed proprietary framework of awareness, clarity, choice, conversation. This supports the notion that the client, the coach can help the client to experience powerful shifts in their thinking. 
through the process of heightening the awareness and deepening the learning and using whatever comes out of that learning as the imagined understanding for forward action. In the organization, we're looking at what is going to help us to do better in performance. What is going to make our staff, what is going to make staff, the workforce more effective? Now, we're saying that we want to have a workforce that have the capacity to think through and reflect through things on their own. We want the workforce that will be able to, to look at things, not just on the critical space or the, or the thinking space, but more at the re reflective inward space. Next slide. Now, what we're saying here is that the client or the coachee most times will come into the conversation and in the work environment, it's, you see that a lot. Line manager, direct reports conversation. It's about critical thinking. It's about justification. It's about um, proving a point. It's about telling what to do. It's about being analytical. Now, with the coaching mindset or with the coach intervention, uh, coaching intervention, you find, we, and with all that I've said in terms of helping the client to reflect and begin to see things in a way that they never thought of before. So when somebody comes into a, convers in a conversation with a coach, it is a discovery journey for the two of them. The client is coming to unearth things that they probably knew before, but was blind, blindsided by them or things that they didn't even know about before that they're going to discover. And the resources to, to, to get to that point is within the clients. This coach is just supporting them to unearth it. And what the client is able to learn to say, okay, to say, oh, now I can see better. Now I understand things better. The coach supports the client to move from the critical thinking process of justifying, of, of analytical mindset into a reflective thinking process where we're going to be a vertical learning and a pocket of aha moments. And that is what we're saying that organizations, when they imbibe the coaching culture across leadership, they're able to create a network of staff that are able to think through things themselves, not because they are told, because they are convinced and they are able to even see their perceptions and values that drive some of these behavior or ways of doing things. So it, be, it, it goes beyond the critical thinking space. It goes into the reflective thinking space where coaches and the, uh, the direct reports can actually look inside and unearth all that has been put in into them or all that they have in them. Now, you might ask me, where is, how, how do you differentiate this from mentoring? Now we were talking about mentoring because we said that the mentor puts in the client. The mentor is, is supporting the, the, the mentee with the, their own experience and they're giving them a wealth of experience. And they play a role, a role model uh, role for the, for the mentee. Now, coaching goes further. What coaching does is that all that is in the mentee or in the client can be better utilized because they can use it in their own specific scenario. For the mentor, they are sharing experiences, which is specific to them. It has happened to them and they are sharing it. But for the, for the coachee, they need to discover things in their own way. That means 
that meet their own particular circumstance and scenario. And that is why coaching is added value and is also supporting whatever impact that mentoring brings to the table. It takes the impact of learning to a higher perspective. It also helps enable the coaches to be more committed because they are convinced from, from their inner mind as to why they should take an action. They can see things from different perspectives. They have looked at things in various ways and they can be convinced that this is the right step for me and this is why I'm behaving this way. So there is understanding, there is meaning, there is reflection and there is interconnectedness. That is the essence of our session today. And I would just want to, before rounding up, I want to ask and say, what is it that is resonating for you? I want to invite you to ask, what is your thought process in terms of how coaching can really be embedded in human resources in the workplace? What process are you looking at? And what is, what is it that you want to share with us? even in this session today. I'll hand over to Benil to anchor that. <laughs>